the Basketball Talk Pro. The other day I got an email uh, from a lady that uh, watches our, our uh, Basketball Talk Pro show. Uh, she's watched it, I guess, from almost the very beginning. Uh, she's not a basketball coach. Uh, she just likes some of the things we say even uh, though they're, they're involved with basketball, she thinks that a lot of those things are helpful to her in her life. And uh, she's a, um, uh, she rides horses and she trains horses. She's kind of an expert in uh, horsemanship. And she sent me a uh, write-up on a man uh, who, um, was an expert at training horses. In fact, he was unique. Uh, he trained horses that other people couldn't. Uh, and he, um, he did this till he was in his 90s uh, and uh, was, you know, was still very much involved in it. It was a passion, a, a love uh, for this man. And uh, in the story, um, he told how he used four steps in order to train uh, horses. And I thought at the time, when I, any time I hear anything, I kind of I automatically convert it to what we can do in basketball. And I thought that uh, it was uh, very helpful and could be very helpful, especially to coaches that may haven't been coaching a long time of how do the steps involved in uh, getting to a high level of skill. It's, these are all skills. Uh, horses have skills, musicians have skills, uh, you know, whether your accountant has a skill, uh, has skills, um, and so it's all in how you can approach and uh, get your players, get other people to uh, magnify these, uh, these skills. And uh, I thought the steps were very good and I could apply them to basketball and maybe help you uh, to see uh, how the, the process takes place. And it can take place in everything you do in basketball. When it comes, whether it's showing an offense, a drill, showing a strategy, uh, going through, uh, preparing for an opponent, um, it, it's all there. And I want you to, uh, to see the process and feel comfortable uh, with it. Remember though, the process is not done in a day or two. So many coaches think if they, if they go two, three days with something, they should see automatic uh, results. Uh, I mean, basically on most of these skills on basketball, you're, you're not gonna see them for a long time until they get to the stage where they really master them. There is a process, and uh, that horse trainer uh, had developed his process step by step, horse after horse, uh, he didn't vary. Uh, he stayed with his, uh, his process to get the uh, training across. So I have, a, I have the four steps uh, on this little sheet here, and it falls in very nicely with with uh, basketball. The first step is tell, show, involve. Now you've heard those, those statements before. They're Confucius uh, statements that he made centuries ago on how to uh, teach and how uh, to learn. Uh, but it infers it's the beginning. That's the first thing you do. You tell them demonstrate, then you let them do it. Uh, they're clumsy, they're awkward, uh, they don't know what to do exactly yet. This is a period of high correction as a coach. Uh, you must correct. They must know when they're wrong and they must know when they're right. They, they can't see themselves, they have to feel it. And you are the person that gives them the information that they need. You have to be very good at that. 
and there, but you also have to withdraw and let them work through some things. Let them do things that they do naturally. Find out that by watching and, and listening and then, uh, but you, at the same time you have to be alert to make good corrections. This next step is learning. They go through a phase where we can't come up with any better term than to say they're learning. Uh, they're not good yet, uh, certainly not m mastering anything, but every day they come to practice and every day they work on a drill. They're learning, learning a lot of things, not necessarily technique, uh, you know, I'm, I, I kind of allow players to develop their technique versus me forcing a technique on them. Uh, and, uh, but this is all in the process of, of the learning phase. And you can tell a learned player, they're slower, uh, they're a little awkward, uh, they don't react to things uh, really quick. This is a period of a lot of repetition and they are still thinking about what they're doing. Uh, but, but it's a period where you repeat and repeat and repeat. They're still thinking, now I've got to remember to do this. I've got to go over this screen or I've got to go under. Uh, all of that is going on in their mind and they may not even be aware of it. Uh, at, at certain points. So uh, you just keep with the repetition. This is probably the longest phase. It can go on for a real long time uh, with some players. But not to be impatient with it. It's a part of it. Every person learns just a little bit differently. Uh, it, we don't know what's going on in their life. Uh, I mean, there might be a lot of things that are in their head at the moment. So you just keep going and repeating and repeating and repeating and then and pretty soon it gets easier. They kind of grasp it and you'll, you'll see it as they go along. But I'm, I'm just telling you it can be a long time of uh, this repetition uh, uh, area phase. The third phase or the third step of, of the horseman's idea there is automatic. It becomes automatic. Uh, they don't think. They execute it well without thinking even about it. They just have done it so much that their body and their brain are, ta are trained. And at this point, they continue to repeat. Because if you don't continue to repeat, you regress. Uh, a very good Tai Chi teacher says that if you miss one day, you go back three days, uh, just missing one day. Uh, so you continue with the repetition, but now it becomes very smooth, very automatic. No thinking, just doing and doing it. Uh, and then the last step, number four, is mastery. Mastering something means you're very consistent in your execution. You very seldom make any mistakes. Uh, day after day, time after time, your, your execution of that uh, skill uh, is very, very, uh, it, it's, it, it's exact what you want. It, and it's not awkward. And now it's smooth. Uh, it goes quickly. They react uh, very uh, quickly and it's perfect. Uh, musicians that go from these three stages when they get to mastery, uh, they don't make mistakes uh, and they play it perfectly. They don't only play it with perfect technique. Their fingers, if they use them like on a piano or a wind instrument, uh, the, very, the, the dexterity is very smooth and very easy and can do it at high 
uh, really high speeds, but it, it has one other very important ingredient, and it's true in basketball as well. The only way I can describe it to you, and this is the way that most basketball coaches and players will understand it, they do it with soul. They do it with feeling. To them, it's an art. To them, it's something uh, that is special. Uh, we call it soul. It's a good word for it. It's deeper than just doing it. It's deeper than just having success and the crowd going ooh and ah and clapping. It's much deeper than that. Uh, the masters have it. Well, trust me, they have it. Well, I'm going to change up a little bit on what we're going to do in the future. I'm trying to make some changes uh, in Basketball Talk Pro. And uh, in the next, um, might take me a little a time, but my thought is uh, to go through the entire book of drills that uh, we use in the monk system, but apply it in a, um, a, a more of a way that, set, that follows the process here, and also uh, the purpose of the, each one of those drills, very, get it very vivid uh, for you. Uh, but I will, I will uh, get the order that I want, that's important, and follow the order that I would follow it if I was teaching it to you on a practice floor. And so um, I look for that and I'll, I'll make sure that we email you in advance, but give me some time. Well, I hope you, this helped you today. Te teaching and learning is extremely important in our profession. Uh, we, if we can't do that, you're going to eventually fail. If you can't get to your players, if you can't get to them in a way that uh, they can do these things for you, don't kid yourself. Don't blame the players. Uh, face it yourself. You have that responsibility. These four things will help you. Uh, if you followed this process all the time in everything you did with players, you would find they would respond with learning. They would know what, what they're doing. So we'll see you next time, and thanks for watching.